So behind me today is the banner I recently hung up at Community Lutheran. This banner has such significance to me because when I was ordained in June of 2018, my home church designed and made this for me. And so it has a special place in my heart and it signifies special relationships that I have people that raised me up, supported me, and who still support me to this day. I am super thankful for them. And this banner, along with another banner that I received from my internship congregation, helps in these times when we can't be together. The reminders that we are a part of a church, a larger church, a larger community and the saints who have gone before us and who are to come after us. We are a part of journey. So this image has some of my favorite colors. It has a dove, a cross to signify so much for us. So our text today is a common text that we hear at funerals because we talk about the place that God has gone, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And, and so it's a significant text about grief and life and death. Our text though, if it's situated, is right, it comes to us from the same night that Jesus was betrayed and arrested. Jesus's final conversation with his disciples. So his first line, do not let your hearts be troubled. He knew that he would go to the cross for you and I, and yet, his first words to us is, do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus is giving us one final example of his love and grace. The disciples, on the other hand, in this conversation, they want a roadmap. They're asking for a checklist, what you and I want. We want the Bible to be our book of easy answers. The disciples wanted that. They wanted to know what it meant, step by step by step, on how to follow Christ, how to live as a disciple. And I think for us too today, we're looking for that. In such unprecedented times, so much unknown, such thick grief. And Jesus says to you and to me, do not let your hearts be troubled. And I'm sure you may have been there too, where I'm at currently. My heart is troubled. Times are scary. We don't know a lot of things. We're asked to distance ourselves from our neighbors. We're asked to do that for the love of our neighbor. So here we are, six, eight weeks into social distancing, stay at home order, this whatever it means to try to keep our neighbors safe. 
limit who we see, what we do. Not for our own safety, that too, but also for the safety of our neighbor. Recently, I came across a poem on NPR. Um, Kwame Alexander took people's writings and created a poem about social distancing. And we know I love poems, so I'm going to bring you this poem today. It's quite long, so bear with me, and we'll make sure there's a link in here for you. It's called Social Distance. Summer bears down on the city, like Granny's old quilt. Here, potted plants swoons on the edge, out of breath, eyes closed, attuned to a second skin of sweat. She stretches neck and torso, searching for a cool note rising from the street below. The fantastic queen, her crown of wrapped rocks, wrapped locks, the jewels in her Merlane sparkle, her body slick in Brooklyn summer, oiled mahogany. From her window, she holds count, holds court. She reigns where dogs interact with rainbows, for her, plants bow their heads down low. Hottest thing in town, stuck inside all day. She opens all the windows, her imagination of freedom, something to hold on to. Only half there, her mind is far off across the world. Kayaking quietly, Gazing at glaciers, watching waves dance. A boat out to sea. The sea breeze blowing against her loneliness, perched up in the hills, overlooking a world of fraud. Soul ready to sail away. You see, smart women bend like stems grabbing at the light. Muscles colt limbs as eyelids stalk the horizon to calculate what comes next, drought or a wall of water. High cheekbones not afraid to climb out or crawl up. It is the same horizon, no matter the color, the same sun. Guess that's how Rapunzel felt, staring freedom in its face, terrified of the unknown, but wanting to escape, quarantined by society, restricted by these walls. Shouting streets stilled, people's voices wilted like plants, no dinner with friends. The sea is forever conspicuous. The gentle blue of harbor water hides its ferocity like the wolf in sheepskin. But she will not wilt. Sometimes as day descends, the dog can have the fabricated ice, the artificial colors. She takes the water cool and clear. The city's facade can't hold her from sailing away on the tide of the night. She sees herself in the sky, in the muddled turquoise of the curtain, in the warm turquoise of the window frame in the gentle peace that shall not last. She is not thinking about the next time they will see each other. 
She is not thinking about the last time they saw each other. She is not thinking about the empty grocery cells. She is not thinking about the furrowed frowns eyebrows. She is not thinking about the word quarantine and why it sounds so social. She's not thinking about the way her lungs hold onto air, like making love to molecules. She is not thinking about the grandmother and the grandfather in apartment 2C. She's not thinking about whether clouds are aware of their shilly shapes and feel self-conscious. She's not thinking about whether the butter will last. At the window, she considers that she is not who she was and she is not who she will be. She is transforming. She will be strong and resilient. She will be honest with herself and those she loves she will have stories to tell, and when she does, they will no longer shake her voice. From here, she will see the anxiety, the worry, paint over its bold performance, like oil and acrylic on canvas. From here, she hopes offering it to a neighbor from a safe distance. From here, she sings, transcending the dark somber string. From here, she believes we will get through this. From today, from here, today will be good and tomorrow will be better. This poem, I think, states a lot about the grief we're all experiencing. And most people think of grief as something that we only experience if somebody dies. But grief is something we encounter when we lose something. And whether or not we want to admit it, we have lost a lot. You have taken on the role of teacher and full-time homeschool parent and working from home. And the ability to go out safely. Can I go be with my neighbors? The sense of comfort that there's so much uncertainty. Do I go and get it? with my family? Am I even allowed to be with my family? And eating out, we are spending so much time at home, not to think about the loss of not going to see your kids play basketball or baseball or track and field or there's no sports on TV. Basketball's been canceled. NASCAR. All the things that you do to fill your time to keep you comfortable. And for some of us, some people, the loss of urgent needs of going to the doctor and having surgery, unless it was an absolute necessity everything was put on hold. 